Hi, my name is Brandon and you're watching another Pulsefired Gaming video. Today, we're taking a break from looking at physical models of starships to help people conceptualize the idea of finding a starship that they want in 3D print and actually going about 3D printing that starship. So, let's take a look. Here we have a post on the Star Wars Armada Facebook page talking about a ship that was recently featured in uh, Eckhart's Ladder's I guess starships that he likes to shit on or something like that. I don't know what he's doing right now, but he's talking about this really cool concept for a starship that was originally posted in the uh, West End Games Star Wars role playing game, the Torpedo Sphere uh, from La Lornar, the same company who makes the Lornar Star Cruiser. He basically in the post says, "Hey, uh, maybe it's a, a replacement for a Star Destroyer uh, with a, for Black Dice." Later on, we talked about it, and uh, he said, hey, maybe we could use it as a proxy for an onager. And I thought that was a pretty awesome concept. So we're going to go at it. First things first, we went to Yegi and searched for Torpedo Sphere, and that didn't lead us with a ton of results. So we're going to go straight to uh, Thingiverse and see if a Torpedo Sphere shows up there. Now, there are other ways to get models uh, to 3D print, but uh, I like to start here because I want to start with something that I can use publicly. Now, it just so happens that we do have another model, but we're going to have to find it from a different place. Uh, we can't find anything on Thingiverse. Yegi is kind of like a uh, search engine for 3D printing things, so it searches... Colts 3D, it searches uh, a thing of verse, it searches CG Trader and a couple other places. Um, but we didn't really have any look there. Let's talk about the Torpedo Sphere real quick. This is the Wikipedia uh, file for it. Basically, uh, it I don't know if it has any canon uh, stuff on it, but in the Legends page, it goes through a lot. Talks about over here, you could see that its size is mentioned. That means that we have a basis. On how to scale the ship when we do go about uh, putting it on there. So it says it's 1900 meters. We know that the Star Destroyer is uh, 1600 meters. So if we take the Star Destroyer scaling, uh, which let's see here, we're gonna say 1600 meters times a thousand, and then we're gonna divide it by 205, which is the amount of the number of millimeters approximately that the Imperial Star Destroyer is in Star Wars Armada, and that gives us a scale of. 1 in 7804. So now we're going to take 1600, uh, do the exact same scaling, then divide it by 7804, and that gives us. Oh, nope. Ha! <laughs> Did the math wrong. Okay, we're going to cut this out. But so you could take the 1900 meters that the, uh, the cut there here. So you could take the 1900 meters. And then times that by a thousand to give us the same uh, 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 figure to work with. And then we're going to divide that by 7804. Uh, and that gives us 243.46 millimeters. So that's about what we're going to scale the torpedo spheres for. Let's go ahead and uh, go from there. So now we have our file for the torpedo sphere. We have scaled it to the correct size, as you can see here. It's 243 millimeters. Now that's not exact, but that's okay. Now we've gone into Mesh Mixer, which is a basic uh, 3D modeling kind of. It's not really a 3D modeling tool. It's a 3D editing tool. Uh, and you might want to ask what the difference is. It's way less comprehensive than something you'd find in like uh, Tinkercad or or uh, Blender or something like that. But it's good enough for our uh, process. Now we could call it here, call it good uh, at the correct size, but I think what we want to do is make sure that this uh, is uh, easier to mount on here. So very first we can go in here, we can go into uh, our parts and grab the Armada keyhole. And there's the armada keyhole and we'll bring it over here and make sure that it's lined up with the center and probably oh, uh, probably put it right about there and then drag it down to where it matches the bottom uh, this is going to be a real big ship so we want to make sure that it's balanced correctly 
I think probably putting it right here is the furthest I would go with it. You want to make sure that it ma um, matches up and get all zoomy in here. And if I can, there we go. Get it in there. Now we can, we could do this a couple different ways, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to select both of these guys and combine them. Now with this, this gives us a chance to take a look at it and make sure that everything's right. We're actually going to go in and uh, take these panels. Uh, we have gone in and selected the uh, generate face groups uh, option in Mesh Mixer. And we're going to select these and then we're going to hit D in the select menu. And that's going to give us the extrusion option. And we don't want these much bigger than what they are, so we're just going to say 0.3 millimeters. So that when we go and paint it and we use like a panel liner or something like that, it's much easier to uh, play around with. So we'll go from there. That's kind of just the very basis of, the most very basic part of this. We're going to throw this now into uh, 3D Builder and see where it goes from there. Now in 3D Builder, we're going to open up uh, the open file and grab our Starship. Here's the Torpedo Sphere Draft. And it loads it up in millimeter scale. The scale is important when you're going into 3D printing and stuff. I do everything in millimeter scale, and that has served me just right. Uh, after we select the scale, it should ask us whether or not we want to fix the model. Now this means that you could take models that are not de uh, necessarily designed for 3D printing and put this in here and give you a basis on how to start making it right for 3D printing. So this is going to go in here and stitch up a whole bunch of polygons together uh, to make sure that uh, everything works well or everything is manifold and, and, and watertight. Uh, so from here we're going to save this and generally when I'm making drafts of things I want to save it and make sure that it uh, doesn't overwrite um, uh, the file that we have just in case we need to make changes uh, on a more rudimentary scale uh, later on. So now we're going to go back into the mesh mixer and take a look at the model again. Now here we are in mesh, mesh mixer again and we're going to go and grab the file that we just saved. Going to replace this, going to go into Star Wars and we're going to hit Torpedo Sphere Draft K which is a uh, designation I use when it's had a keyhole added onto it. 3db which stands for that's already had a pass in repair for 3d builder so go in here and we hit the inspector and the inspector says oh hey we've got some problems over here so we're going to hit auto repair all and see what it does looks like it's just stitching stuff up not exactly sure what stuff it's stitched up but we will go from there uh, we're going to hit done then we're going to go into edit and hit generate face groups so you notice that it's kind of messed up our uh hangers that we had on here based on the original model and we may want to go in and play with those it's kind of made it hard to see what's going on over here but i think we're just going to go for it so in mesh mixer it looks pretty okay we haven't really done anything to this this is just kind of a dry run to show you how we what we uh, consider when uh, finding a new 3D model to 3D print. So let's go take it to our slicer and see how it fits. All right, so we're in Cura right now. Uh, we're going to see if we know for a fact that this ship is going to be too big to 3D print with our resin printer, which means we're going to need to use our FDM printer to do it. So we're going to grab the file, we're going to pop it in, and we're going to see how it looks. Now, it doesn't really like the size of this file so we're going to or size the ship and really the ship at this point is unremarkable in its um, shape and design so we're not going to print this yet we're going to have to do some more work on it but we want to see you know how much time is it's going to take we're going to pop this up to 0.2 millimeters uh, of layer height because it's not going to be a big deal we are going to have to have supports i believe um and we use tree supports, so we're going to hit slice, and it's going to chug along for a little bit and tell us what we're going. And again, this is just for illustration purposes, showing you it's basically kind of start to finish, um, you know, where to find a 3D model, uh, which we use the Yegi and Thingiverse specifically, what to do with a 3D file when it's ready, 
uh, and uh, go from there. So, uh, we've got one day, 13 hours, 54 minutes for a total of 349 grams. So this is going to use over a third of a single roll of filament. And I think that's going to be a little silly, basically, because <laughs> it's a big egg. But we're just looking for illustrative purposes. So you see that the support on here, there's support on the bottom. And there's support stretching to the keyhole uh, on the bottom of the, the ship. But the rest of it really doesn't need a whole lot of printing. So, if you wanted to take a model off a of Thingiverse or somewhere else, and you wanted to scale it correctly to uh, what you want to see on the tabletop, this is kind of how you do it. This is a basic, basic kind of crash course on how to do it. Now, we started in 2018 with an Ender 3 and printed a lot of Starships with an Ender 3. Pr uh, prior to that, we were using Shapeways to find other people's star Starships and get them 3D printed out. Um, but thanks to uh, Danny from Miami showing us how to 3D print uh, models for D&D uh, back in 2017 and 2018, uh, we're, this is where we are now. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully this gives you a basic overview uh, of how you can take a Starship from kind of the idea of conceptualizing 3D printing a Starship and... Uh, actually going through and following through on your own uh, a lot of the stuff that we do is commercially available so if you want if you're interested in purchasing starships that we show on our channel feel free to contact us at info at pulsefire.com uh, or use our contact link uh, which is pulsefire.com slash contact uh, otherwise thank you very much for watching i hope i gave you a good idea on how to 3d print your own starships and you have a great day